Hey, what is going on guys? This is Jason with Jattern Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the uh, this device that I created. Um, this is the one that I use to uh, hatch eggs and it's also the one that I use to grow out fry. Um, I'll link the video above uh, to the first one so you guys can see uh, more detailed how I created this thing. Uh, but I've made a few uh, kind of modifications to it so I wanted to go over just a few of those for you guys. I've had some problems with a few different things and I'm still trying to work out uh, some of the kinks out of it so let's go ahead and, and let's let's take a look right now and let first of all let's see even what I have going on in here right now so if we look here in the first tray uh, these are uh, some angelfish fry these were actually I started writing the dates down on them too this was these actually hatched that's the it's not the day the eggs are laid it's the day that they were hatched uh, these hatched on uh, November 13th so these guys are uh, about three days old they were they've just uh, uh, started free swimming today earlier this morning they weren't today they are so they're about to get their first uh, meal of brine shrimp uh, the second one right here, these uh, just hatched on the 15th. The, this is one of the containers that I haven't, I didn't paint the bottom. As you can see, when you paint the bottom, it's a whole lot easier it is to see them. Um, these guys are still uh, uh, just eating off the uh, uh, egg yolk or the, the yolk sac. Uh, so I haven't really, don't have to do anything with these guys yet. Um, also, you'll notice I finally found these smaller trays. In the first video, this was the only trays that I could find. Uh, these are on Amazon. These are ones that I actually found. It's the same brand, uh, but I actually found those guys on, on eBay. And so those, those work really, really well not, and don't take up quite as much space. And then over here on this side, these guys hatched out on the 31st. So I think today's the 17th or 18th that I'm filming this. Uh, these guys ate this morning, and as you can see, uh, their bellies are extremely full. These are, um, all, all these are angelfish fry, but I think these are the koi angels uh, from the parents that I literally just bought, like, what, three weeks ago. And so you, you can't see them all. Some of them are down here kinda buried in this corner. I think there's probably about 30 of them or so in there. Okay, so let's talk about a few of the different changes. Uh, so first of all, uh, you can see that in here I've got Java Moss. Uh, the reason that I put that in there, because I think three different things it helps with. One of them, it kind of provides them cover so they don't feel like they're just out in the open all the time. They can get in there and hide. It also ha helps with bacteria growth uh, so that um, I know this thing stayed cycles, cycled all the time. And again, it's always putting water in, so that part is probably fine, but it just makes you feel a little bit more at ease. Um, to have that in there um, because this has definitely been a learning experience um, trying to figure out exactly how to raise these fry try to figure out exactly how uh, much to feed them I'll do another video on that on another time but just know as far as the fry goes sadly I've probably killed about four or five hundred trying to learn how to do this and just so you know, I've watched tons of videos on how to learn how to do this. And a lot of what you do, you just have to learn by doing, no matter what you've read. And so I know that number sounds terrible and, and I hate the fact that's what it is, but it is what it is. Um, but again, I've learned a lot um, since then. If you guys are enjoying this video and you would love to see more fish room tours, more fish store tours, and a bunch of cool DIY projects in my amazing fish room, be sure and hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, so the uh, the next thing is, is, so if you look up here, uh, I've changed the way uh, this thing, uh, where the, the water is, uh, dripping into it uh, I've actually hooked it up and it's all it's all in a, in a line here now 
And so I went ahead and, and, and just created one for every uh, single one of them. So if there is a, uh, a container in here or not, like you'll see this one over here by itself, this one actually isn't on right now. And before, if you might remember, um, what I had on there were, were just like drippers that would drip like a gallon per hour or two gallon per hour. I went ahead and took all those off and I got these instead. Because these, you have the ability to, uh, you, you twist them and it opens them up. Or of course, if you, if you twist them uh, counterclockwise, it closes them off. So this one you can actually control. So I think you can little, let as little out as like a quarter gallon an hour and let out almost six or seven gallons uh, per hour uh, out of it. So that allows me to control that better instead of just having the set amount. And so that, that's working really, really well and it was good that I got it all mounted up here at the top so it's, it's real easy to, to kind of to do whatever I need to do as far as uh, moving these things out. And uh, also what I did on this, this is, uh, this is where we refill the tank at. This comes from my 275 gallon tote that's set up to automatically push water through the system. So the same thing, I can open this thing up as wide as I want because I like this, I like this setup to be doing a ton of water changes. So this, this, whole, entire, this whole entire thing probably gets a water change about every two maybe, uh, three days. Uh, another change that I made is if we can look up under here, you can see this light. If you see down there, you can see where the light is actually exposed. And the biggest problem that I was having with this light is with these containers being so close that I was getting a lot of algae buildup pretty quickly. So what I did is I just took a piece of uh, uh, plastic and I painted it white and then I stuck it right on top of the light. So you can see there's not a lot of light getting out of this thing anymore. It's enough to still see what's going on, but it's not so much uh, direct light because I think that was one of the problems that I was having too is there was, be there was so much algae and slime that was building up in there and I think it was, uh, it was killing off some of the babies. Um, so now I've got that completely under control. So now one of the things I do is probably ever uh, four or five days, I'll take a, a, a sponge, you know, like th one of the, these, these like Mela something, I can't remember what they're called. Um, I'll take one of these things and I'll just run it all along the bottom there and I'll get out all of that, that excess slime and algae that's building up on there. And that seems to, again, made a big difference as far as mortality rate. Um, I had been actually every four or five days I would take them and I would move them into a clean one but it's a pain trying to catch these guys um, a lot of times what I end up using is like a, a, a turkey baster to uh, to catch them because this is also what I use to feed them because I feed them brine shrimp anywhere from three four or five times a day and so you know I just kind of suck them up in this and put them in the other one well something else that I never really thought about is a lot of times this right here uh, this thing would get kind of water and gunk and stuff caught up in it so when I opened it up it just it was just coated with slime and so I'm sure that was not helping things either. So now I keep this thing really clean all the time. Again, just try to avoid any type of bacteria, anything building up, anything that's gonna, not gonna keep those uh, fry from living. So right now, I'm hardly ever seeing any dead fry in there as before. It seems like every day I was pulling out some. Something else that I'm doing right now temporarily is if you'll see in here, You'll see some of the babies that I have in here. So I literally just started putting them into this tank. That, that That's not what the the final plan was. Uh, but I noticed after, uh, when the fry would finally start to take the shape of an angelfish, which was usually at, uh, I don't know, day 20, 25, 30, something like that, um, I started to lose them in these small containers. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm taking a 40 gallon breeder that I have and I'm cycling it and so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start removing the fry when they get about that size and putting them in there so for right now I just threw them down in here and I've noticed I put 12 of these guys in here and it looks like all 12 of them are alive so again that seemed to be one of the big problems that I was having is just keeping them in those small containers for just too long
You'll notice too that I've got these air stones that are in here and uh, I usually don't put those in there. I, there really hasn't been much of a need to have those in there. Um, sometimes what I do though is whenever I get some new eggs, you're probably wondering because there's no eggs that are in here because they've all hatched. Whenever I get whenever I get new eggs in, I take this container right here and I fill it up to almost the top with the tank water that the eggs are in, and then I scrape off all the eggs into this container. I put one drop of the uh, methylene blue, and then I take it and I just put it inside here. I just take it and I put it right inside here, and and I let it float. That way, it acclimates uh, to the temperature of this water, and then that's when I'll take one of the air stones and actually put it inside here um, with the eggs. And then every day uh, after the first day, I'll remove about 50% of this uh, water and I'll put 50% of the water from the, that's in this tank into here. And I'll keep doing that uh, for the first uh, three or four days until they finally hatch. And once they hatch, I'll try to remove almost all that water so that I don't put any of that methylene blue water uh, into this tank. All right, so there you go, guys. There is the update on this thing. I'm absolutely loving this. I am having so much fun raising up these fry, being able to use this method. It's just, it makes things so much easier. It's fun coming out here uh, multiple times a day and feeding them and seeing exactly uh, what's going on with them. It's making me really want to get into some of my epistogrammas and stuff and to really get those guys to start breeding so I can start doing some of the uh, some of the same things. Heck, it's even making me excited. I may get a pair of, uh, of discus and start getting some discus eggs and getting those to, uh, to hatch out in here also. I know there's a lot of cool things that, that can be done. Um, I might even take another one of these 20 gallon longs and set this same thing up. Um, because as you can see right now, just barely getting started, I've already got three of these things uh, completely free. And within the next five days, I'll have another uh, set of eggs that'll be in here. Because right now I have four uh, mated pair of angels that are laying eggs just absolutely continually. So if you guys got any comments, you got any questions, be sure and leave it down below. I uh, really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So thanks again, guys, and God bless. If you guys are enjoying this video and you've never subscribed to my channel already, would love for you guys to join the team and just come alongside me as I learn all sorts of new cool stuff in my fish room. So be sure and hit that subscribe button.